tech rabbit here. So anyway, now I thought we'd go through the basics of the GoTech drive and its usage. So let's get started. So anyway, the basics is the um, first we start with the GoTech hardware, and um, there's many different variants of it, but. Um, I have this one, and this has the, uh, oh, the OLED display and then the rotary switch for selection actions. So, for any hardware to really do anything useful, it needs some software, and that's called firmware. And um, in this case, it's the Flash Floppy um, emulator software. And then you add on some extensions through the uh, HXC Floppy emulation um, firmware. So, um, this is where um, the actual operational modes come in. So it's an um, HXC firmware for Gotex and the usage, and then if you scroll down, then you actually um, have the operational modes. So the, and now we're some ideas. We're going to go through the setup and the actual physical, how it how it actually looks like when you're when you're using these different modes. So let's have a look at the setup first. So, in my case, uh, when the when I purchased the unit, then it actually came with this non-labeled CD with a bunch of directories and files on it. And then it came with um, two A4s worth of instructions. Uh, this covers, of course, the commentary on the installation and and the actual mode usage found it a bit confusing so I actually had to go through the process of, of establishing how to use the how to set up the different modes and actually see how they worked on physical machine to actually get an appreciation of what they're about so um, let's have a look at the setup that I used and um, the files that I took they are from I refer to the CD but um, those files you can actually get from the relevant GitHub site also. So uh, I'll put a um, in the comments of the video. I'll put all the links and, and also this text. So I have to try and copy from the video. <laughs> anyway, um, let's start with some of the basics. So what you need to do, uh, what I did is that you need to study, get the baseline config file. And if you have the CD, then it's um, in this directory. And what I did is that, um, or had to do, is that I had to adjust the um, rotation of the display because, in my case, it turned out the way I've installed it, it was the display was upside upside down. So that's this slash rotate, and um, then I had to, uh, I added this slash narrow that tries to make the text a little bit more squashed so you get a little bit more text in the display. And then I actually took the away the option that it would um, um, turn off the display after a certain amount of time. I found that annoying because I was thinking that this <laughs> system was dying all the time. So, so I just forced it to be on all the time. And in my case with the number of hours the system was running I don't think it, it would burn any, any anything onto the display for me. But it, and also, if you need to actually do a factory defaults resets, then you you can um, press the rotary switch for um, more than three seconds, and then it will actually do a yeah, firmware settings re reset. So, getting into the different modes, um, the first mode is called native mode, and then you just dump the config file with those modifications. I showed into the root of the um, USB stick and then you can just add one or many um, ADF files to the USB stick and uh, as I said I will be demonstrating how these different modes work on the actual hardware so, so you can actually see how uh, yeah, what does it look like when you're actually using it so I'm going for, right now I'm just going to go through how to set, set things up and then you have something called out of boot mode and in that case you again you take the slightly modified config file and then you need some extra software components um, so you need to 
have an auto boot dot dhfe file and then hxc dfe dot cfg and then you get them if you have the cd then it's this is where you get the um, hnc software um, contribution and then into the root you put um, the image files as many as you want and then if you well, this is uh, actually not rather when you like boot it for the first time and you haven't actually uh, defined what file is the um, the objective of the um, boot sequence then um, it'll bring up this so-called FF manager and um, I'll actually show you on the physical machine um, how you I get access to this but I actually added also a comment on, on, on how you do it uh, I, will sh I will show it and then the last mode is so-called index mode and again you take the star slightly modified config file and then in the config file you need to actually go in and say um, navigation mode to indexed and there's lots of confusing uh, articles online here and there because it depends on the firmware version that, that, that you have on the, the, the drive of how this actually works but basically in the version that I have so the firmware version I have uh, then you name the image files like this, so you know, with, a, with a numerical index. And you can also have optional text and then .adf. So um, you can <laughs> even if this is basically a file index-based selection, so you know you, you would basically this was originally intended to be used if you had a seven only seven segment display, you didn't have an OLED display. So what they did is that they kind of modified this indexed mode usage so that you could actually add optional text so you could actually have the uh, DSKA index or the index file name and then you could actually uh, add like underscore you know <laughs> disk name <laughs> so you, yeah uh, so I'm not really sure if this index mode is that is that useful um, but um, it uh, yeah, it's still included and a little bit modified. So, okay, now that I've established that basics, then I think we can move into um, actually looking how these different modes work on the on the machine. So, here's my Amiga 2000. I got it open because I've got other projects also. So, stay tuned for upcoming videos. But anyway, here is the um, drive drive and it's running in so-called native mode and that of course is controlled by the files put on the USB stick so what I have on the USB stick is the config file and then I have three different ADF files one of them is the workbench file and then I have an extras file and then I have the Amiga um, test kit so the way this works is that by default when you uh, put it in the first time when it's there's no disk selected. So what I can do now is that now it's showing the workbench disk that I can just select it. And now it's active um, for the um, Omega 2000. So anyway, I just thought I'd show a little bit of the boot sequence. Um, so now when you select the actual um, Omega Forever. start booting when you get into the workbench. So now when you're in here then you can actually do now you can actually go and select another um, disk. Just by rotate or or with the push buttons and as you see now we get the Omega test kit on the disk. So that's how that works. And then it's just a comment that um, remembers what disk you've um, selected so if you power cycle then it will actually pick the workbench by default and start loading it so this is the, the USB configured without a boot so actually first time you boot it you get into the um, into the menu softwares Work 
crunch. As you see there, it's selected as the first one. And then it's a weird thing that when you take the top line, then you get into the menu. And then you can say, save the setting and reboot it. Remember the set. I mean, the way to clear the it from remembering the setting, uh, at least based on what I've tried, is to do the um, firmware reset. Then, the, then it forgets what um, what image it should use by default, and then you can get into the menu already when you just power up the Amiga. USB and so But there's also another way to get to the um, selection process if you want to like add more options. But then you have to boot it into the workbench first. Oh now we're in the workbench. And then to bring up the utility software, they're all the same menus, and then you have to press the the two buttons. See if I can do it. And then you get the, it kind of loads a virtual disk, which is called FF Manager. And then here you have the FF Manager, and then you can just start. So, again, you can like configure disks, which ones you want to use. And then again, when you take the top line, then you get into this, uh, this menu here. I haven't figured out if you can actually, <laughs> like, this was started from the workbench, like if you just wanted to exit here. And, um, get back to the desktop to the workbench. This is pretty much the only one I haven't used. I think, let's see, no, I just do look at So it seems like the only way to get back to the workbench is actually through the um, reboot process. So basically now when it reboots it should actually go directly to the we'll start loading workbench. Yeah. So, it's this one. Now we look at, the yeah, the last one. So, yeah, indexed. So if you can see on the display there, then it show, just shows the different um, indexed files. So that's number two, that's number three. So just a bit of bonus information. So if you click on the selector, you get into a sub-menu and it has a few options. So you can handle the right protect. You can exit the selection and then exit and reboot. So, so a few, few options. So anyway, that kind of wraps up the different um, operational modes and usage details. So I think that the GoTech drive is actually a very good, very good solution um, to have around. And um, yeah, and it's much easier to handle the image files than it is to actually have physical floppy disks and, and uh, the availability, as I said, the availability of functioning, fully functional Amiga and disk drives is oh, it's <laughs> yes, getting less and less, less of a possibility to find, find those that actually work. But anyway, see you in the next one.